But right now, the only way to play a custom game is by creating it, and then we immediately will play it back in the main activity. So what I want to do here is add one more menu option for downloading an arbitrary custom game. So to do that, we're going to add a menu option. So open up menu main, and we're going to add in one more final menu item. And let's give this a title of download custom game. And the ID can be MI download, the menu item download. And similar to the other two above it, we're going to have show as action be never. So we always want this to be in the overflow menu. Let's copy the ID, go back into main activity, and register a listener for when that menu item gets tapped. So r dot id dot mi download, and in this case, we would like to call this method show download dialog, download dialog, and then return true. Okay, let's define this method. So I'm going to put this below the functions that we're overriding, and then I misspelled download. So let me fix that. So this download dialog is going to be simple. All it is is the ability for the user to enter in through an edit text the name of the game that they want to download. So I'm going to use the layout inflator to inflate that view which has the edit text. So I'll say layout inflator from this inflate r dot layout dot dialog download board null is the second parameter, and this is going to be a view that we're going to call board download view. And the idea is going to be we're going to call that same method that we have show alert dialog. The title will be fetch memory game, and the view is going to be the board download view that we are about to define. And the third parameter is what should happen when the user taps on OK. So it'll be view.onClickListener. And what we want to do here is grab the value text of the game name. So let's first define the dialog download board layout. The root element here can be a constraint layout, that's fine. The only view that we need in our constraint layout will be an edit text. And before modifying, individual attributes of the edit text directly here, one thing to notice is that we're going to be using many of the same exact attributes as the edit text that we showed in the creation flow. And so I'm going to open up activity create, and we have the edit text here. I'm going to go ahead and copy all of that, go into the code tab of the dialog download board, and copy over that same edit text. We'll have to add in the app namespace declaration. Many of the attributes, for example, the allowable input digits, number of max lines, input type, important for autofill, all of that should be identical in this edit text and the edit text in the creation flow. But there are a few modifications we'll want to make. Let's change the margin bottom to be margin top and make it 16 dp. Let's update the hint to say enter game name so the user knows what to do with this edit text. And the constraint bottom doesn't make sense anymore because there is no BTN save. So I'm just going to say constraint top to top of parent, which makes it flushed with the alert dialog top. Finally, let's update the ID to be et download game. Now we can grab the edit text from that board download view find view by ID with the specified ID. And now the game to download will be the text attribute of this edit text. So I'll say et download game dot text dot to string dot trim. And now we can call our method download game with this game to download string. Okay, let's try it. Let's run the app. And now we should hopefully see one more menu option. Okay, so we do download custom game. And I am going to try out the larger game that we had tried from before, large test, tap on OK. So this is good, it's promising because I do remember that we had made the large underscore test game a medium sized game, which means there are 18 cards or nine images that we added. And yeah, you can see that this is indeed the images that we had uploaded. So one thing that you'll notice is that there's a little bit of a delay the very first time that we 
download that particular image. It takes a couple hundred milliseconds or maybe even one second. And then every subsequent time that we download that same image, for example, the Golden Gate Bridge, subsequent times that we display that image is much faster because Picasso is caching that image. Once we've downloaded it once, subsequent times are much, much faster to load. So that's one optimization I'd like to do, which is in the download game method, as soon as we're successfully found the, the game, one thing we should do is prefetch all the images with, with Picasso. And this makes this is actually it's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna say for image URL in user image list dot images. And I'm going to say Picasso dot get and I'm going to just load the image URL dot fetch. And what this fe dot fetch is doing is saying, hey, let's go ahead and even though we're not displaying this into an image view right away, go ahead and download it and fetch it so it's saved in the Picasso cache. And one other thing I'd like to do here as well, actually, is just show a snack bar to indicate to the user that they're playing this custom game. Let's try it. So we have a couple games that we've uploaded so far. Large test, play game, test two, and test three. Let's try maybe test three. And one other thing to look for is that the title of the screen in the action bar should also update appropriately. With, let me say this, test three. Okay, so we are playing test three. We got the snack bar. And now you can see that the image, images are loading much faster, which is a great sign. Now we can play the game like a normal game of memory. One bug you'll notice at the top is the activity action bar title hasn't been updated appropriately. So let's debug that. If we go into the setup board method, that's where we set the title. And so it relies on game name. And the bug here is that the game name should be set before calling the setup board method. So by doing that, now that bug should be fixed. Let's try it one more time. So let's try downloading a game called game two. Oh, uh, there is no game two. What did we call it? Test two. Awesome. And so you can see how now the title of this activity has changed to be test two and we got that snack bar and we should hopefully be playing this new custom game. And now it feels so much snappier. So that's great. One last optimization I want to make on the Picasso side, which is that there's still no way to avoid the fact that we might have to spend a little bit of time downloading the image the very first time. And so when that happens in the memory board adapter, there's a nice functionality in Picasso to load a placeholder image while the image URL is being fetched. And so I would like to add that as well. So I'll say r.drawable.ic image. And so we're going to define one more vector asset, which will be kind of the placeholder image, uh, a silhouette of an image, like a black and white image. So let's go into project, go into the resources, and let's create a new vector asset in the drawable directory. Image. So we'll call this IC image. And yeah, let's leave it as color gray. And then finish. Okay, so this error went away. And let's see if we can actually see the placeholder image. So if we're really quick after we download a game, then we might be able to see it briefly. So I'll say large test. Yeah, and then you, you might have briefly seen the very first image I flipped over, we were able to see that placeholder image and all the subsequent images are much faster to load because we're doing that prefetch operation. So that's a really good sign. It's a much better experience now. Before moving on to the next segment, which is focused on design and style improvement, there's one more small improvement I wanna make here, which is that if we have this snack bar show up, right now there's no way to actually dismiss it. And it's not that hard to make the snack bar dismissible and give the user more control over the UI simply by going into the activity main. And right now the root element is a constraint layout. If we instead change that to be a coordinator layout, then any snack bar can then be dismissed by the user. So let me do that. So coordinator layout. And then we're going to add a bunch of these properties in the coordinator layout. So 
So copy this, put it at the end. And then I'm going to hit Command Option L in order to fix the indentation. And we also need the layout width and height on the constraint layout, of course. And this ID of CL root, we're actually going to apply that onto the coordinator layout. So everything else is identical because the only time we've, we're referencing CL root is as the anchor for the snack bar. And by making the anchor for the snack bar a coordinator layout, now the user should be able to dismiss the snack bar with more control. Let's try it. Okay, it looks like we are crashing, and I think I know why. Yeah, the reason is because there's a class cast exception. If you go back into main activity, you'll remember at the top of the file right now, we're defining CL root as a constraint layout, but this should actually be a coordinator layout. And here, CL root is finding by ID, and that's fine. So now let's try it. Hopefully, we won't crash. So we are able to boot up properly. And if I trigger the snack bar, now you can see how I was able to dismiss it. In the next part, I want to do some low hanging design improvements with all of you. And then we'll be done with all of the functionality and design for the whole app. I'm super excited to wrap this all up. Hit that like button and subscribe so you know when subsequent videos come out. And I'll see you all later. Bye.